Hey guys, if you're like most IT admins, it's likely that you don't have a great process today for managing all the configuration settings and security baselines within Microsoft 365. If you're like most of us, we follow physical checklists to basically implement and maintain all of our baselines and change control around those is often a very manual and time consuming process. If you're looking to learn how to automate this process across one to many Microsoft tenants, stay tuned because in this video, we'll be covering a very cool topic called desired state configuration and I'll be showcasing a tool that you can use as well called Simian Cloud, which allows you to automate the backup deployment and monitoring of all of your configuration settings in Microsoft. My name's Nick, I'm a Microsoft MVP. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video as well too. As we're going through the video, scroll down into the comment section and comment on what you guys are doing today for managing your configuration settings, security baselines within Microsoft 365. There's a lot of cool features I'll be showing you guys today that will help manage and deploy the configurations in your own Microsoft environments. But before I do, I quickly wanted to touch on what desired state configuration is and why I believe it should be part of any business's standard operating procedure. I like to think of the desired state configuration as a combination of a backup solution and a traditional imaging solution like PC imaging. Now I may have just triggered some of you talking about imaging so I apologize but hang in there with me. When you talk about desired state you're talking about imaging a Microsoft tenant aka all the settings, all the configuration settings, even all the applications that are in that tenant and kind of packaging that up into a single image. From there, you're taking a snapshot, much like a backup, and you're using that to compare the existing state of the tenant with what you would consider to be the desired state, aka that golden image that you've basically configured for one to many Microsoft environment. Microsoft actually has an open source project for desired state configuration called Microsoft 365 DSC. It's been around for a little while now and it leverages PowerShell on the back end to basically do everything that I just described. That includes things like backing up the existing configuration settings of a tenant, being able to compare that to the existing state of the tenant, and being able to repackage that so you can deploy those settings in one to many Microsoft environments. Now, if you try to go implement Microsoft 365 DSC, you'll find that it actually isn't the easiest of processes. In fact, the white paper is over 80 pages long and it took me about eight hours to do a single Microsoft tenant and set that up. There's a lot of proficiencies that you need to have, not only to set this up, but to manage it long-term, like being able to provision Azure VMs, manage Azure DevOps, and deploy digital certificates. So for this reason, I'm gonna be showing you a lot of the core concepts of DSC with a third-party tool called Simian Cloud, which I believe creates a really good user interface on the front end to kind of hide and mask a lot of those things that are going on behind the scenes that take a lot more technical skill set, if you will. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, many of you out there are using manual checklists today to manage all the configuration settings, security baselines within a Microsoft tenant. If you're a managed service provider, an MSP, it's likely that you're doing that with every customer you onboard into your ecosystem and you're not able to detect what we call drift or configuration settings moving away from what you would consider to be your baseline over time within the tenants that you manage. If you're an enterprise customer, it's likely that you have similar concerns in that you cannot manage drift within the tenants and it's very hard to keep up with all the various changes from Microsoft that come month over month. Additionally, for enterprise customers, you have to have a much more mature change management process because likely the changes you're making in Microsoft will affect thousands of end users. So for this reason, it's more popular to have staging or test environments that you can use to test out these configurations and then promote them into a production environment, much like a software development cycle. This is just another thing that a desired state configuration tool can provide. With that being said, as I mentioned earlier, leveraging Microsoft 365 DSC wasn't the most user-friendly, so it led me down to a search where I was trying to find a third-party tool that could be a little bit better of an experience for managing desired state configuration. That search led me to Simian Cloud, and we actually used this tool in the previous MSP that I used to work for. Because I know this tool so well and I know what it has to offer, I wanted to showcase some of the four major benefits of leveraging a desired state configuration tool, and I'll be showing you that leveraging the Simian portal to showcase more of that from a visual standpoint. So let's go ahead and get into the benefits. The first benefit is monitoring, backup, and reporting. As an IT admin, you need to be able to define your baseline, back it up, and then have continuous monitoring and reporting of how a Microsoft tenant or Microsoft tenants stack up to that baseline. In the Simian portal, you're able to add Microsoft 365 tenants and you're able to compare their existing settings upon first ingestion either with the Simian baseline, which is just Simian's best practices, or you can use your own tenant as the baseline as well here too. 
So in this situation, I'm using T-365 tenant as the baseline, and that's what's gonna be compared with source pass, in this case, the new tenant that I'm onboarding. And that will basically tell you the discrepancies between what you would consider your configuration setting baselines or your desired state configuration versus what this tenant has. After you onboard a tenant, it's immediately backed up, meaning that there's a snapshot taken of all the existing configuration settings, all the applications, everything that is within that tenant. So you have a point of reference that you can either roll back to or work from, from a reconciliation standpoint. Additionally, afterwards, you also have daily syncs going on that can tell you any changes in the tenant from that previous snapshot as well. And this spans across the entire Microsoft product suite, including things like Azure AD, Intune, Exchange, SharePoint, and other services that Microsoft offers. So it's very detailed and you can see a lot of cool information here when there's changes within the accounts. In the reconciliation section, you're able to select a tenant here and compare it against your baseline. So in this case, I'm selecting Contoso as the tenant that I want to view, and it's comparing against my T-365 baseline. So you have four tabs up the top here. You can see the settings that are only configured in Contoso. You can see settings that are configured in my baseline but not configured in Contoso. You can see ones that are configured in both but configured differently with the baseline, you can see ones that match. And ultimately, obviously you're trying to get the matching state for a lot of these or push ones in that are applicable uh, to your baseline as well too. So within these, you have a lot of core settings that you can configure, but you also have things like Intune applications as well too, that you'd be able to push across to different tenants. A very popular one that would be mimicked in a lot of environments is looking at conditional access policies and being able to publish those into other tenants that you manage within the environments that you have today. The second benefit of a desired state configuration tool is compliance. The initial configuration of your baseline is only half the equation when it comes to being compliant. You need a way to detect any drift or movement away from your baseline. It only gets harder with the more tenants that you manage. With your baseline defined in Simeon, tenants are synced daily to detect any drift and reports are generated to show any tenant outside of compliance. This is an email of a summary that I got from Simeon and after investigating what was changed within the tenant, I figured out that someone had changed the SharePoint settings as far as the document sharing settings within that environment and it was against my baseline. So very insightful information here. And then back in Simeon, whenever you go to reconcile a Microsoft 365 tenant against your baseline, you can go into the conflicts here and you can see the various settings and you can expand upon them. So if I use the SharePoint settings here as an example, I have configuration settings. I can click on view and I can see what's in this tenant compared to what is in my baseline. So for this setting, it's about legacy auth protocol being enabled. And this is against my baseline because I don't want legacy auth in my tenants. So this is a good example where I could go in and I could enable the setting to use the baseline setting or use it for all. And this will change all of those settings here across the SharePoint environment to what I have in my baseline. And this is essentially unchecked here, which is now saying that I'm using my Microsoft 365 baseline. I can then choose to reconcile this as well. And this will go ahead and reconcile, meaning that it'll get me back into compliance with my baseline. The third benefit to a desired state configuration tool is lifecycle management of your baselines through development, testing, and production environments. We all know that Microsoft is changing or introducing new features on the regular, and a mature business should be testing changes in the demo environment first before introducing those into production. Within the Simeon portal here, with all of these various settings and controls that you have, you can choose to test them in the demo or development environments that you have here as well. And then you can promote them or move them into your baseline by just clicking on these three dots and clicking move to. And then here is my baseline, which I could use to push in this compliance policy that I have for iOS within Intune. So it's a pretty cool way to have some type of deployment options here. And additionally, those come with approval workflows that you could have as well, which allow multiple people maybe to promote them into a production environment. As I mentioned earlier, this is especially important to enterprise level customers that have staging and test environments you want to promote into production as it will impact maybe thousands of users in the organization. Additionally, with any of these baselines, you're able to roll back to a previous snapshot as well here too. 
You can see the various snapshots that have been taken. They're all timestamps here as part of the naming and nomenclature that you have. When you click on one though, you can see the configurations as far as what's changed from what the baseline is today. And you can then use the settings within here to roll back to a previous version or understand where things may have changed over time. The final benefit I wanna talk about is multi-tenant management. A desired state configuration tool needs to support more than one Microsoft tenant. As an MSP, keeping up with changes and baselines across all of your customers can be a huge headache and it's impossible without some type of automation. The same can be true for enterprise customers with multiple tenants under the organization. In the Simeon portal, you're able to see all your customers in a single location and you're able to reconcile them against your baseline here as well, just from this portal and you can monitor them over time and get alerts on the drift going on within these tenants. Additionally, another cool multi-tenant level feature that you can have is under the app builder section here, where you're able to select a tenant and select an existing package as well too from a software perspective. And I'll choose Adobe here as an example. And you have the ability to push out this configuration to one or many tenants as well. So this is allowing you to package applications and being able to basically front end the whole Intune configuration as many of you may be familiar with if you've done that and had those headaches, honestly, of configuring those Win32 files or the MSI applications to be deployed through Intune. One of the cool parts is after you're done with the app builder and configuring that, you're able to go in and you're able to select one of the baselines. And when you're in that section, you can scroll down under the Intune app section. And from here, you can click on the three little dots. You can either click on apply to or copy to, and I can select the tenants that I want to copy to, or I could click on apply and select the tenant that I want to apply that application to as well, which include that application package file. So it's a great way to deploy applications across tenants and not have to repackage them and do that on an individual tenant basis. Okay guys, that's everything that I want to showcase in this video. I know we just briefly scratched the surface on a desired state configuration tool, but this should leave you wanting more. I'll link below the Microsoft 365 DSC documentation below so you can check that out. And if you're looking for more automation around the deployment, maintenance, configuration of DSC, definitely check out a tool like Simeon Cloud. I was able to set up a trial very easily and I was connected with an engineer that led me through the entire setup process so I was confidently able to roll it out to the Microsoft tenants that I was managing. Additionally, Simeon has their own baseline if you need to get up to speed on security best practices and this is applicable for both the MSP space as well as enterprise. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Like and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.